I'm Anthony from Hashlet. Today we're going to talk about this. This is the Wired January 2021 issue, and they decided throw everything out, and we're just going to publish the first four chapters of a book that releases in March 2021. So the book is 2034: A History of the Next World War, and it's written by Elliot Ackerman and Admiral James Stavery. And this, I read this. Uh, I actually read it probably record time than I normally read Wired. And I almost kind of want to get the book. And the book, you, right now, you can pre-order on Amazon. And it comes out in March. So um, let me give you a little overview of the story. Make your own decision. If you love war stories, I think you might get interested in this. Um, so let's start off with, it takes place between Washington, D.C., uh, Tehran, Iran, and the South China Sea. So the story opens up with Com Commodore Hunt. She has a flotilla of three ships in the South China Sea doing their normal U.S. Navy patrol, as it were. And she comes across this fishing ship that is on fire. Now, her first instinct is, well, let's take one of the boats, go help these guys out. Uh, then she th says to herself, well, you know what, maybe take the other two, because she has three in the flotilla. Just take the other two just in case because tensions with China had been ramping up and she was a little concerned that it might be a trap. Uh, surprise, it was a trap. So while the Commodore is has uh, her sailors offloading the, the contents they discover on the fishing boat, which is, they, they say technology, but they don't really say what type of technology. Um, the Chinese military approaches in their... Uh, Zheng He and its carrier battle group and things get heated. Now at the same time flying near Iran is uh, Chris Wedge Mitchell, that's his name Wedge, and he's a test pilot working on an experimental F-35 trying to work out the bugs and at the same time uh, while he's flying over the Strait of Hormuz uh, he's told well go ahead and, and take some pictures you know why the heck you know just test everything out while he's doing that, he loses complete control of this F-35. And while he is descending, like somebody hacked it and took it over. And now while he's descending into Iran, he is breaking all the equipment he can. One, to try to take control, and two, prevent secrets from ending up in the Iranians' hands. So eventually he's forced to land. And we go back to the South China Sea. And um, basically the, the Chinese are sitting there kind of like, threatening them, and then all of a sudden, um, hunt ships just lose all communications. And then their, their equipment, anything digital, just goes out. It is it is like, what is going on here? It's like, they released an EMP that only affected the other people. Uh, these first four chapters don't really say what it is, but it sounds like just simple hacking, but you know, we'll find out if you get the book. So anyway, we go to Washington, D.C., and there is Dr. Sandeep Sandy Chowdhury, and he's a deputy national security advisor based at the White House in Washington, D.C. And then um, he is the one at the comm uh, when the note test comes in about the ships in the South China Sea. And his hands are tied because at the same time, the president is on Air Force One on the way back from a conference. And um, there was just for some reason they can't get through. Uh, they come to find out during the process of the panic that the... Uh, Admiral Lin Bao, Chinese defense attache based out of the Chinese embassy in Washington, D.C., is at the front gate of the White House, where uh, uh, Sandy is located. Goes and meets uh, the the, uh, the admiral at the gate, and the admiral says, you need to release that ship. Your your ships you know, are looting. And um, Sandy's like, well, I don't have the authority to do that. Um, and the admiral says something kind of suspicious. Uh, he goes back, finds out that the test pilot... Uh, the F-35, all of them have disappeared, and it seems like they, they landed in Iran somewhere. So nothing is making sense. And then all of a sudden, the, the computers go out in the White House. Like, just everything shuts down. There's no communications, nothing, um, after a phone call from Lin Bao. And then um, everything turns back on, and no one can get access to anything. Everybody is locked out. So they are entirely blind and deaf. So then we go back to the South China Sea and uh, the carrier group uh, for the uh, Chinese, the Zheng He, uh, basically decimate the, the three ships that uh, Commodore Hunt are in command of. And 
Commander Hunt and what few people survived were lucky to survive. They had been decimated fully and never could counter. It was a slaughter. Now, uh, com uh, um, Commodore Hunt ends up, of course, having to be debriefed. And the, co the, the committee that is debriefing her thinks she's nuts. That what she witnessed about the uh, communications being blocked and the technology just stopped working it was something in her head. It's just like, it could not have really happened. You kind of had, a lot of, they just, they made excuses for why things weren't right. And she was basically locked into a, a room uh, near wherever she was brought back to and just kind of was told to stay here. So then we go back to uh, the White House and uh, it's pretty much a blackout. The president's finally made it there and nobody can do anything about it, but they start getting updates from local media. How they got him so fast, I don't know. But we go back to Tehran, we find that uh, Wedge has been um, placed in a cell and uh, Brigadier General Kasim Farshad, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, uh, he's charged with interrogating Wedge. Now, Wedge, after like being questioned and then giving his name, rank, and serial number, um, the Brigadier General decides, you know what, I'm gonna go a little hard. Thing is, Wedge intimidated him to the point where the Brigadier General did so much damage to Wedge that Iran I retired the Brigadier General. It was like you were an embarrassment, you went too far, uh, he was retired. So we go back to Washington, D.C., and they're kind of trying to figure everything out. They're, they're, like Things aren't working, things are going to be reprogrammed just to get back in the system. Um, they, every, Sandy knows that they're being watched. Like somebody hacked them and um, Lynn Bow had made in a statement uh, something about uh, Sandy's mom and, and his kid. And there was no way Lynn Bow could have known about his family. So that's how Sandy knew they were, they were straight up hacked. Like they've been watching them for months, if not years. So their systems are penetrated. And then we end up uh, with something happening. N not quite sure what power kind of just does a weird thing. Uh, eventually, the, the people at the White House are trying to think, maybe we should consider tactical nuke. You know, just to get them, like, just to get away, you know, like, punish them back for attacking their ships. Or, or you know, probably prevent something else. And the conversation is kind of tabled. So, uh, the decision was to send another group of ships to the South China Sea. Because there was a threat from China about taking... Uh, Taiwan. Uh, Taiwan is the democratic former Chinese government that when the communists took over China, they pushed them into the Taiwan. Chinese, the communist Chinese call Taiwan Chinese Taipei. And for the last, I don't know, five plus decades, or in this story, maybe 70 years, um, China still wants Taipei to reunionize. Now, keep in mind, Taipei is pretty much Hong Kong. It's, it's a modern city, it's skyscrapers, commerce. Um, the adding of, of Taipei slash Taiwan to the Chinese economy would be a big boon because of how successful it is as an island. You've seen Made in Taiwan, right? So the United States sends their new carrier group in and they get decimated too. And it's like, what the heck? So while Commodore Hunt is in her hotel room waiting for her tribunal or whatever they do, uh, she notices, she can see the, um, the ports where the ships come in, notices three badly damaged ships just slink into the port one night. Uh, her, her boss, her direct boss, comes in and tells her uh, what happened, and they think what she said was true, not something she made up. Because the three ships that remained out of, like, dozens um, had the same, like, this this is what happened. Uh, we lost communications, and all our digital technology just died. So obviously they had been hacked. Now, now we're going back to Iran. Uh, Sandy is released to the Indians. The Indians had negotiated for Sandy after a conversation with the White House um, because Sandy is no longer an asset to the Iranians. They had just messed him up head to toe. Technically, um, the Brigadier General did. But um, Iran wanted to wash their hands of it. because, And I'm going to tell you, there is two sides here. There's the, the European Union and the United States. And then there is China, Iran, and Russia. And we'll get to Russia in a moment. So uh, Indians have wedged, so he's pretty much safe. But he, he is so badly hurt 
that he needs time to heal. So eventually he gets healed and then shipped home. Now you really don't hear any more about him except he gets like he wants to get back into the job to go you know fly because he knows that something's about to happen in the China Sea. But that, that's the end of the Wedge's story as far as these four chapters are concerned. So we get back, um, Commander or sorry, Commodore Hunt is offered the opportunity to go back out now with these these ships, uh, but things kind of escalate. So. Um, Brigadier General Kasim Farshad, after having a little bit of time, because time passes, uh, he is called back into duty. He is giving, because he was disgracefully discharged, he was given a, like, a lieutenant commander rank. And his job was to go with a Russian sub, locate the transcontinental cables so they can be cut, disabling upwards of 80% of the United States communication capacity. Now, to do that, they had to go to the North, uh, the North Arctic Ocean, uh, because I... I my understanding is the line runs very far north and across on both sides of the, of the North American continent. So they go as far north as they can to find the cable. And uh, the Brigadier General, right now Lieutenant Commander, is being explained to the Russians what they're going to do is send a sub, or like a mini sub or a drone or, or individuals down there and to cut the, the necessary lines. Well, at some point the commander says, eh, screw it. We're just going to bomb it. And they bomb the entire set of cables. Like, all the, like, any communications cables, anything else that runs under, all of them are, wasn't just communications. And uh, by this point, the the third uh, battalion of Navy ships from the United States is now 300 miles away from Taiwan. The Chinese fleet is now located itself between China and Taiwan, or Chinese Taipei as they call it. Now the United States were going, okay, our internet just pretty much got cut, what's going on? And the decision was made to send a tactical nuke. This is how the fourth chapter ends. The United States sends a nuke and it blows up uh, a major port of China. And then that is the end. You have to order the book to read the whole thing. And I'm, I'm one of the fastest times I've ever read a magazine because it, the story just brings you into it. It is like, wow. like. What's going to happen next? Uh, you you kind of you just you you get lost in the story. It's it's like the characters. Most of the characters are very well developed. Uh, the ones I named here, generally more or less. Um, now Admiral Lin Bao, he actually uh, reported to a Minister Shang of the Central Military Commission for China. They don't really talk too much about him. He kind of just there uh, to give uh, Lin Bao his mission. So he's not really an important character, but you do see him frequently. Uh, because at one point, I guess he's technically in charge of the uh, Admiral Ma Kuang's uh, Zhang He and its carrier battle group. But uh, Admiral Ma Kuang, he, he dies in some type of, like, the second the second U U.S. Navy group actually got a couple of shots off before they lost power. And one more thing I want to point out. Um, after realizing what the actual problem might have been, the third fleet to come out from the U.S., they they went old school. They, they got rid of the old the new technology. Went old school, and um, and that's all you know about them heading towards Taiwan. Uh, but but continuing on the 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 it's internet it's internet warfare. It's it's scary because you realize this could potentially be a real thing, and just by cutting our internet access, it was decided we have to nuke a major port of a, another country. And keep in mind, again, an admiral Crow wrote this story, so he probably knows what he's talking about. Uh, and it, it seems so real. The The book is, I mean, well, technically it's a magazine, but the chapters are spectacular. There's just so much to read here. And, um, like, here is an insert that shows the map of the world. And I don't know if this is going to be the cover of the book or something, but... Uh, it really gives you an idea of where everything takes place. And uh, it is... Wow. Now, if you like stories about the future and war stories, this this definitely read this Wire magazine. You can pick it up at new stands now. Or, again, pre-order uh, in March on the Amazon store. Uh, it, it, yes, I, I, I'm seriously thinking about getting it. Uh, just because just I want to know what happens. Does the United States win? Do we end up under Chinese rule? What happens? But uh, anyway, I think it was a good book. It was definitely a good read. Um, again, only the first four chapters I got to read. But yes, check out Amazon to pre-order the book if you're interested. 
If you want to talk about 2034, please post a comment. Otherwise, thank you for watching, and remember to like and subscribe. I am Anthony for HashlessNet, and we are a WordPress.com affiliate. And every single time you visit our websites or click on the link below our videos, we earn a little bit of money that allows us to buy new items to create more content. And you can be an affiliate too by having a WordPress website and joining the program. We have three WordPress websites. We of course have HD Games, Games Ohio, and my personal website, the Internet Politician. And you can include banners and other images for a number of different WordPress programs. If you upgrade to a premium account, you can get a domain name, the ability to add add-ons, and customizable code. So go ahead and check out WordPress via the links in this video's description. And thanks for watching. Thank you for checking out our content. Before you leave, please remember to click like and then subscribe. If you want to receive notifications, do not forget to enable them by clicking on the bell. Then afterwards, check out our social media at Hasledge.net and our website at hasledge.net.